So, an additional thing that everyone should know is that there are many different ways to level up. One of the other things you should focus on doing is every class gets a hunting log for a good amount of time. So, for instance, my Arcanist, if I was leveling up as an Arcanist, which is just another Disciple of Magic, there are mobs that give you bonus XP when you complete them and kill them. As you can see here, this symbol means experience. And when you kill them in the areas that they're saying, it'll give you bonus experience. Now, most of these mobs will be, for instance, on the rank 1 will be through level 1 through 10. The rank 2 mobs will be level 20 or 10 through 20 and so on and so forth up to 40 to 50. Now you can see because it'll have the numbers next to them about what level you should be at when you're collecting these things. This is another great way to gain experience. Now some other quick things to know that I will explain in more detail and they'll merit each of their own videos are things like when you do the story quests you eventually get up to the point where you get a chocobo and this is basically the point where you actually get your mount and can ride the mount. You get a chocobo license. The story quest will drive you to join any grand company. You can join the Immortal Flames, which is the one in Ulda, the, the, the Maelstrom, which is the one in Limsa Liminsa, and the Twin Serpents, which is the one in uh, New Gridania. It doesn't matter which one you choose first. You can actually swap at any time later on. Uh, but you can check... I am under the Immortal Flames in the... Yeah, I'm under the Immortal Flames Grand Company. The city-state just means where you first started, and it's kind of an RP kind of thing. Because I started as an Arcanist first, my initial city was in Limsa Liminsa. And I love saying Limsa Liminsa. Limsa Liminsa! I don't know why, but I say it that way almost every time I say it. So once you join the Grand Company, you can start doing the Grand Company Hunt Logs as well, which has seals as rewards. Now these seals can be earned once you join the Grand Company and complete things like Fates, which I'll make a video and explain to you about. Basically, they're just places... Let's go to Blackbrush right out here and we'll show you what a Fate is. So as you can see here, this symbol on the map is means that it's a fate. This one just happens to be one that you have to go talk to the person to actually start the fate, but most fates will just appear on the map. In fact, here's another one that you have to talk to someone to start, but most fates will appear on the map as just an area surrounded by blue. You can sink down to the level. So if you have any friends that play this game, uh, they can actually do these low-level fates with you. For instance, I am on my level 70 red mage right now, and we can complete this fate. We'll start it. It says recommended level for this fate is 7. But when we level sync, boom, now we've been synced down to the maximum level of this fate, which happens to be level 12. Now I can only use the abilities I would have normally up until level 12 as well. So let's just uh, go ahead and start casting some of this action. And as you can see over here, on the right hand side, I have dimmed it a little, just to make sure it doesn't get in the way too much. Is there's a completion bar, uh, you know, what the goal is. Basically, this just explains what you should be doing, which is what we're doing is protect, protecting the alehouse from these guys. As you can see, we just completed the fate. We don't get any experience because we're max level, but we got a little gill, and then we got seals. Now, fates are a way to get seals, and oh, here you go. Here's an example of a normal fate, what it kind of looks like. And basically, just go in there and... You, you, you kill the stuff and, and they can be done in giant groups of people and even if the giant groups are individuals It's just as long as you get credit for killing stuff. You can join any fate All right, and last but not least what we have is one of the most important tools in the game that you learn later And that is these aetherite crystals now You'll see these throughout the game and once you come to the first couple it'll teach you how to use them But I wish there was more of an explanation for instance in every one of the main cities that have a giant Aetherite crystal, there are some things called the Aethernet. And this is, right here, Aethernet. These are other places in the city. Uh, for instance, one right here. This is the Adventurer's Guild Aetherite. In the cities, every time you come across the little ones, you want to actually just activate them. And that's just you collecting it, basically, to where you can teleport. 
And it's the same thing with these big aetherite crystals. Throughout the whole world, there are tons of aetherite crystals. Like for instance, we just went to Black Brush. Now because we went there and attuned to the aetherite crystal, which just means we went to it and clicked on it and it'll say like attuned to it. Now we can teleport there anytime we want through the teleport system. As you can see, it has a list of all the ones separated by where they are and what area of the map they are. So this is the macro area and then where on that map it is. Now these are, you know, in places all over the place and is extremely important. Now the farther you go, the farther you go, the more expensive it costs, but it only can cost up to a thousand gil, basically 999. And there is two things you can do to make it cheaper. For one, I have this one registered as my free destination. Now you can register one free destination and then three favored destinations. Obviously the free destination means it doesn't cost to teleport there. I have it here because my grand company is here and it's one of my more favorite cities because it's easier to get around to all the places. The favored destinations, however, cut the cost in teleporting there in half. And you can change these as many as you want throughout whenever. I would suggest just changing them to places that you're going to be leveling around where you are and every time you come across an aetherite crystal even if you're not going towards it just go and click on it because it's going to save you time in the long run so we're going to go over to the sapphire exchange basically which is just uh, the market in olda now here is an example of a small aetherite crystal that person just learned the aetherite right there you just have to walk up to it and click on it and then it'll attune you to it now here's the market board this is basically the auction house, and I'll do a video on this. So you can search by the weapon of any of the classes or jobs, the armor, the items, and they're all separated than housing materials. And then what you have right here, you will learn, is a summoning bell. Now this summoning bell is key, because it keeps your retainers. And what your retainers are, are basically your how you post auctions up on the market board, or the auction house, whatever you want to call it, and how you store items in a said bank. Now I have four retainers, uh, and they're on ventures, which I'll also make a video about retainers specifically. But to give you a quick overview, we have, you can store items, and they have an okay size space, 175, a little bit more than you per retainer. And then you can sell up to 20 things on the market at once. Now this game is very pretty. Uh, as you can see, uh, the, the, the art style is much different than many of the other games. It's not like Black Desert Online extreme graphics, and it's not like cartoony graphics, uh, more cartoony graphics uh, with like uh, brighter colors like, say, World of Warcraft or, you know, something along those lines. This game is extremely fun. It gets intricate, it's a little bit slower paced, there is global cooldowns, moves that aren't on global cooldowns. However, one of the greatest things I love about this game is that you can make one character work on achievements and things and do literally everything you can in the game. As you can see, I have all my Disciple of Hand and Disciple of Land, which are the gatherers and then the crafters, as max level right now, and their gear can be cross-saved. For instance, I will, I am now, you know, equipped to my blacksmithing gear. And basically, it just requires the main hand is how you change a class. For instance, if I just change the main hand to something else, boom, now I'm an alchemist. The, the weapons is how you change your class. You have to do quests to unlock the ability to change the class, but once you unlock it, you're just, you, you start at level one. For instance, I have a couple of regular classes that aren't leveled up all the way. I only have one at max level right now because I like focusing on crafting and stuff. And since I just came back to the game recently, I had to relearn a lot of this stuff that I wish everyone knew when they started because it makes the game easier and a little bit more fun. Now there are a lot of intricacies in this game and I'll be trying to make a video to help you out on each of these things. This is just for brand new players to Final Fantasy themselves. I'll be doing a video on specific things like retainers, how to use the market board, how to optimize retainers, what to do in these grand companies, and I will also do things like basics of every class 
because there are a lot of videos out there that have like you know end game rotations and everything but no one tries to teach you the meaning of the class the whole goal of the move sets and how the moves interact with each other because moves in this game will combo off of each other to make them more powerful but thanks so much for watching i hope you have a great day please don't forget to like and subscribe leave a comment down below if even if you're a veteran of this game and just want to know a couple things about it, I'll make sure to address it if I can directly. And if it needs a little bit more explanation, I'll even make a video about it for you. And thank you very much. You guys have a great day. This is Nashi, the Conservative Gamer. Thanks so much for watching again, guys. You have a great one. Peace.